private health care uh, contractor uh, denied, uh, well, someone with a disability in a wheelchair who'd been in for 19 years just uh, was complaining, making complaints, registering health care complaints. So what the prison officials decided to do, they put him in solitary without a wheelchair for quite, quite some time. And actually, there's a public interest group that just actually filed that suit in federal court. So I think we're going to start seeing more and more um, at least law on the subject coming down, because that was filed in the second district. Thank you. It just happened a week ago. Thank you. You have a question? Go ahead. Yes, I'm looking for a quick response, like a phrase to two sentences from as many of you as want to. Um, if there was one thing which you would encourage us to pressure uh, the government to do to improve the, the prison industrial complex, this whole thing that we're talking about, what would that one thing be? Education. Thank you. Shorter sentences. Or violent crime. I'm sorry, what was that? Shorter sentence. No, I, I, I would add to that, especially for the most unspeakable crimes, essentially, which are sex crimes and homicides. First, cool. changes in the parole policies. I go to prevention, lifting people and communities out of poverty, and providing privilege and education, privilege through education. Um, one of the reasons I like working Communities where we're getting most of our uh, youth uh, that are coming into our correctional facilities. It's got to be about prevention. Much more money into prevention. I'd say re incentivize the system so that decision makers uh, have more of a tolerance for risk. Thank you. Any other questions? We have a couple more minutes. Uh, in the prosecutorial community, are there study groups for uh, how to, what the future might hold in terms of decriminalizing drug laws? Well, no. Decriminalization aren't the conversations that are going on in a lot of the groups that, that I'm uh, part of. We are, we are increasingly uh, speaking of uh, evidence-based decision-making and uh, where it is that in, in the process that we could uh, ex exercise more uh, evidence-based decisions. We're a small group of prosecutors in this country right now that are coming together. We're the more progressive thinking prosecutors that are looking for ways to improve the system so that we're not seeing um, as many people coming through. I also think that maybe this is part of the discussion that needs to be had here too, is that people sometimes foist a lot of criticism on the criminal justice system without necessarily understanding that people are going through a lot of other institutions and failing in a lot of other institutions before they even arrive at our doorsteps. And for me personally, I, I think, you know, the brilliant question that was asked about where to put resources, gotta be more resources put into schools, into after school programs, into these neighborhoods. We don't want these kids. Unfortunately, when there's failure in one institution, failure in other institutions, a lot of resources that are being deprived for the mental health institutions, there's only one institution that's open seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and unfortunately that's us. And we're not equipped to deal with a lot of the issues that we're, we're confronted with. For those progressive prosecutors, we've decided to open up our doors and allow for partnerships and bring in the expertise from other uh, disciplines to help us but there's still a lot of institutions that will process people uh, with mental health issues, you know, veterans that are returning, people with, uh, with chemical addictions. So it's really about opening up our doors and, and, and partnering with, uh, with other agencies. Right? Great, thank you. We're gonna close it and end this right now because we do have to clear the room and prepare this space for be the evidence project. There's information up here. As we heard, because, if we have, because we have longer and longer